But the basic principles in, in short are those shown here. Uh, we'll go through each of those. I'm not going to read yeah, yeah, them yeah. all out, but, but those are in short the, the basic principles of space law. Great. So first of all, um, space has to, I, I think I might have missed one. Yes. Here we go. Um, where is space? Yeah. This, is, this is the delimitation between airspace. <laughs> this is airspace. one of my favourite topics. Yes. Yes, between airspace and outer space. The outer space treaty doesn't actually set a boundary and it doesn't define a space object. So it does use the word space object, but it doesn't say what a space object so, is. So, so the law doesn't define where it starts or what it is, but uses those terms. Right. So does this then derive from common law? So, uh, well, there just isn't a, a boundary at the moment. Okay. Um, but, uh, you know, if something is in orbit, then, then it's a space object. Yep. Um, if something is, so the Convention on International Civil Aviation, uh, or yep. the Chicago Convention, does define an aircraft. Okay. And it defines as a, an aircraft as any machine that can derive support in the atmosphere from the reactions of the air other than reactions of the air against the Earth's surface. Okay. So, yep. key to that definition yeah. is atmosphere. Yeah, 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 yeah you're right. And um, I'll defer to you to... Well, we explored this quite earlier in this course about, you know, how the atmosphere is defined and it's really hard, right? right? You know, the atmosphere changes based on solar storms and that, that sort of thing. So, yeah, that's it's an interesting way because there, there also isn't a clear cutoff for atmosphere either. No. I think this is a good example because, you know, people want it to be, you know, hey, our country's border ends here that just physically does not happen mm. with our Earth's atmosphere. That's just not how the physics of it is, which is interesting to see because that then directly implies how the law has to enforce yes. this very hard to define word. It, yes, yes. And, and countries have been pressed to commit to a, a, a delimitation. And the response in the Committee on the Peaceful Uses of Outer Space quite often has been we don't see it as necessary yeah. to commit to commit ourselves to a particular delimitation but but using an analogy from maritime law yep. the way in which the territorial sea that is the the uh, extent beyond the shore yep, of a yep. nation out to it's currently 12 nautical miles and has been for some time um, that came about partly from how far a cannon could fire from shore <laughs> and therefore, you know, <laughs> prevent ships from coming too close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. And, and so you could imagine, <laughs> um, you know, in the future that national airspace yeah. could be defined by the range of a surface-to-air missile. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you could see probably there's quite a few ways you could define this. Right. And in fact, I think we've kind of seen some of these discrepancies with some of the private space travel, right? With mm. Blue Origin and Virgin Galactic of saying, you're in space, no, I'm in space, you weren't high enough. Right. And that purely is just because it's not defined internationally, so then it's just defined, is it defined nationally? nationally? It's defined it, it, nationally? It is, in, in some pieces of legislation. So in Australia, for example, the Space Launches and Returns Act makes reference to 100 kilometers. Yep. Um, if you're going to send something beyond 100 kilometres, then you need a, yep. an Australian payload permit, for exactly. example. And the US is 50 miles, is that it? I, I think it's something like 50 miles. Yeah, I'm not, not yeah which exactly I think is familiar. like 82 kilometres or yes. something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. Um, okay. Yes. And so, so, so the national, this is where that's interesting point between the national law and the international law. That's right. Because the international law is essentially saying, we don't know how to define it because it's hard. Mm. Putting the onus then on the nations to define it and them to choose the most appropriate right. measurement, I guess. Right. And, and sometimes, as in Australia's case, the uh, government officials will say, we have a piece of legislation which sets a limit for the purposes of defining when, a license, when you have to get a license or permit, yep. but then in in an international context, they will say, but we don't want to be bound internationally. Oh, okay. Interesting. All right. <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> so loaded. All right. That's what I heard. <laughs> <laughs> Becomes complex.